Amazing, my dear students. Welcome back to our science video lesson. I am your science teacher, Teacher Larry, and welcome to an amazing way of learning science. In this video lesson, we are going to describe motion in one dimension. Part 1 will focus on distance and displacement. Part 2 is on speed and velocity. And part 3 is on acceleration. Are you ready to learn? Let us start! Our objective for this three-part video lessons is to Describe the motion of an object in terms of distance or displacement, speed or velocity, and acceleration. Many of the things around us move. Some move slowly like turtles and clouds. Others move faster like trains. But how can you say that an object is in motion? In this video lesson, we are going to describe motion using the concept of distance and displacement. Take a look at this example. Is the student in motion? You are right. The student is in motion. But what is your basis in saying that the student is in motion? Correct. The student is in motion because of its position change. It moves from the house going to the school. When an object changes position during a period of time, the object is said to be in motion. To find out if there is a change in position, we use a reference point. A reference point is defined as the starting point or the initial position or the origin for measuring motion. It is our basis in determining if an object is changing its position. In our previous example, the house is where the student started. So in this case, the house is the reference point or the initial position. In reaching the school, the student changed its position or location from the house to the school. Therefore, motion has been observed so what is motion motion is the act or process of moving or a particular action or movement of an object brought about by force motion is exhibited by a change in position with respect to the reference point for a particular time interval there are two quantities involved in motion they are scalar quantity and vector quantity. When we say scalar quantity, it is the quantity that describes the magnitude only. Example are distance and displacement. When we say vector quantity, it is the quantity that describes the magnitude and direction of the object. Examples are velocity, displacement, and acceleration. When the object is not changing its position at a given time interval, it is said to be at rest. You already know a motion is exhibited by a change in position with respect to the reference point for a particular time interval. Let us start describing motion by finding out how far did the object travel after it changed its position. There are two ways to find out how far did the object travel. First is by measuring the total length of the path traveled by the object which is called the distance. Second is by measuring the distance between the initial position and final position of the object which is called displacement. Let us talk about distance. Take a look of this example. The student walked 15 meters to the east, then 5 meters to the south, 
and another 15 meters to the west. From this example, what is the total length traveled by the student? To find out the total length traveled by the student, we need to add the length traveled by the student from its initial position or reference point to the east, which is 15 meters. And from the east to the south, which is 5 meters. And from south to the west, which is 15 meters. So the length traveled by the student is 35 meters. In short, when you say distance, it is the total length of the entire path that the object or a person traveled in moving from one place to another. Distance is a scalar quantity. This means that it is specified by a magnitude alone. The standard unit of distance in the international system of unit is meter. To get the distance traveled by an object, we just need to add all the length of the path covered by the object. It can be represented by the formula D total is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3, wherein D1 is the distance 1, D2 is the distance 2, and D3 is the distance 3. This will depend on the number of lengths covered by the object. The value of the distance is always positive. Let us talk about displacement. Displacement is the shortest distance between the object's initial and final position. It is the distance from the initial position to the final position. It gives us an idea on how far is the object from its starting point and in which direction. Displacement is a vector quantity. Unlike scalar, vector quantity is described by the both magnitude and direction. Just like distance, the standard unit of displacement in the international system of unit is meter. Let us take a look of our example earlier. We already know that the distance covered by the student is 35 meters. Let us now find out its displacement. To find this, we just need to measure the distance between the initial position and the final position of the object. Thus, the displacement of the student is 5 meters south. This means that the student is 5 meters away from its initial position to its final position. We can find the displacement mathematically by finding the difference between the final position and the initial position of an object. Unlike distance, the value of displacement can be positive, negative, or even zero. Take a look at this illustration. The distance between the house and the dog, as well as the distance between the house and the person is 10 meters. The displacement of the person that moves in a straight line from his original position is 10 meters west, while the displacement of the dog that moves in a straight line from its original position is 10 meters east. Even though they both move through equal distances, their displacements are different because of the person moves to the west while the dog moves to the east. Let us answer these questions about the distance and displacement. Can displacement be equal to the distance? The answer is yes. This can happen when the path traveled is a straight line. In the example, the distance traveled by the student from the house to the school is 10 meters and the displacement is 10 meters east. The next question is, can displacement be greater than distance? The answer is no. It can be shorter but it cannot be greater than the distance. Remember that displacement is the shortest length between the object's point of origin and its point of destination. What if the student in the illustrations go back to its starting position? What will be its total distance and what will be its displacement? His total distance will increase two times 
or will be doubled but his displacement will become zero why do you think is the reason why its displacement is zero it is because the starting position of the student and its final position is the same thus we cannot measure the distance between them let us now try to solve this problem on his way to school Larry traveled 90 meters north, 100 meters east, 90 meters north, 250 meters east, and 80 meters north. What is the total distance traveled by Larry? I will give you 30 seconds for you to try answering this problem. This is the illustration traveled by Larry going to school. Let us identify first what is unknown. The unknown is the total distance traveled by Larry. And the next, we have the given. We have the distance 1, 90 meters. Distance 2, 100 meters. Distance 3, 90 meters. Distance 4, 250 meters. And distance 5 is the 80 meters. Our formula will be total, B total is equal to D1 plus D2 and so on. So our solution, we have B total is equal to B1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4 plus D5. Let's now have substitution. B is equal to D1 for 90 meters, D2 for 100 meters, D3 for 90 meters, D4 for 250 meters and D5 for 80 meters. So the total distance is 610 meters. Let us now try to calculate the displacement. A girl travels 2,500 meters to the west but then backtracks to the east for 1,050 meters. To pick up a friend what is her total displacement I will give you 30 seconds to answer the question To solve the problem, we must identify first what is unknown. The unknown is the total displacement of the girl. Next, we have to identify what are the given. We have the final position, which is 2,500 meters, and the initial position, which is 1,050 meters. Let us now identify the formula. We have displacement is equal to final position minus initial position let's now have substitution we have the distance is equal to 2500 meters minus 1050 meters so the displacement is 1450 meters west And that ends our discussion on distance and displacement. In this video, we were able to describe motion by answering how far did the object travel using the concept of distance and displacement. In our next video lesson, we will describe motion by describing how fast did the object move using the concept of speed and velocity.
see you on our next science video lesson.